beginning of motion pictures is built on dreams of wealth and fame, on lies and cheating and backstabbing, and of course, throw in a big dash of science and experimentation. It's an amazing story, and I'm going to concentrate on just one important part, the Latham Loop. By the end of the 1800s, we knew a little bit about motion pictures. Movie cameras had been invented and they were being used, although they were still somewhat primitive. But to view a movie, one had to look through a viewfinder in a big wooden box, and the movies lasted only a few seconds. So to make a profit, movies should be longer, and they needed to be projected on a screen. So to have a movie projector that projects longer movies, well, you need to understand how projectors work. Let's begin with this sophisticated model of a movie projector. Here we have the top and the bottom reels. Film feeds from the top reel down to the bottom reel. Some projectors have different configurations. Here between them we have sprockets and these sprockets have teeth that fit into the film and move the film along continuously. They just keep turning all the time. And here we have the film gate. This is where the action happens. Right inside of here, the film has to come to a dead stop and then start back up again as many times as 24 times every second. The point is this film has to stop and start on every single image. And while it is stopped, right here in the film gate, there's a mechanism that opens a little window and lets light shine through the stopped image and it projects that image onto a screen. Then, before the film moves, the window closes and everything goes dark. Then the film moves one more frame and it happens all over again. It happens so fast that we think we see motion on the screen. What we're seeing are a lot of still images flashing before us. And because of something called persistence of vision, we think we see motion. And now for a change, here is a real projector. The parts are the same as the one we've just been looking at. Here's the film going through the two sprockets, and you can see it's changing from continuous motion to intermittent motion. And this intermittent motion is caused by this pull-down claw. On this demo projector, it's about one frame per second. Normally, it would be 16 to 24 times faster. Something like this. Okay, some of you who have been paying attention may have said to yourself, those little claws that pull the film down, that must be terribly tough on that poor little film. For a short film, it's bad enough, but this one is longer and 10 times heavier. So if we want to have films longer than three or four minutes and we don't want those films to be damaged, we have to do something. And of course, that is where the Latham Loop comes in. At the top is the Latham Loop. The film feeds through the film gate, and the Latham Loop keeps some slack in the film as it changes from continuous to intermittent motion. That protects the film and keeps it from tearing. Our Latham Loop story continues with this guy. Woodville Latham had been an officer in the war between the states. He later became a professor at West Virginia University where he taught physics and chemistry. He was not a great teacher and looking for a way to make more money, he partnered with his two sons, Otway and Gray Latham. They believed they could make money in the movie business, so they formed the Lambda Company. They associated with many of the pioneers of the movie industry, including Thomas Edison. 
Eugene Lost, William Kennedy Dixon, and Enoch Rector. It was quickly becoming clear that 30 second or one minute movies in peep shows were not the way to go. They needed longer movies to make money. And that, of course, brings us once again to the Latham Loop. Woodville Latham, along with his sons Otway and Gray Latham, and Eugene Laust, electrical engineer, worked in the lab and produced a functioning movie projector that used the Latham Loop. The Lathams, like other entrepreneur movie makers, wanted to make money. And to make money, they needed to project movies onto a screen. And they needed longer movies. And of course, they needed the Latham Loop to reduce stress on the film. It was a great time for experimentation in filmmaking. Look at the work of Edward Mybridge, the Lumiere brothers, Bert Akers, Etienne Jules Marais, William Freeze Green. And we also need to keep in mind the Latham's struggling Lambda Idoloscope Company and their employees, Eugene Lost, William Kennedy Dixon, or maybe Enoch Rector. And of course, we have Woodville Latham and his two sons, Otway and Gray. Here's what Rose O'Neill had to say about the situation. She was the wife of Gray Latham and of course the daughter-in-law of Woodville Latham. Woodville Latham had the first idea of projecting an enlargement, and Gray was in Mexico getting moving pictures of a bullfight. I think it was in 1895 or 1896. So, it looks like the Lathams were able to shoot longer movies and project them around 1895 or 1896. Any of these innovators could have come up with the idea of the Latham Loop. But we need to remember this. Woodville Latham was actually awarded a patent that showed a projector with loops designed to eliminate film damage. Perhaps Woodville Latham came up with this idea himself. Or maybe not. We don't know. It could have been someone else's idea and Latham just filed for the patent. We simply don't know who invented the Latham Loop. But we do know it was an invention that was used from the late 1800s and for the next 120 years. And movies would not have been the same without it.